I'm just, I think I'm being reasonable when I'm asking people, hey, you're an expert. You've been doing this job for 10 years. It's about time you make things prettier as a package of yourself, right? Financial independence. Freedom. Financial picture. Independent financially. Financial future. Financial freedom and wealth. Financial independence. Get your fill. Financial independence and long life. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Get Your Fill, Financial Independence and Long Life, where we explore ways to achieve those two goals and amazing, successful, creative, cool, fun people come on to help us. Like today, Annie Margarita Yang is with us, and she is the definitive voice in millennium finance, millennial finance, specializing in strategies for beating today's tough economic challenges. She's the author of an award-winning, best-selling new book called The Five-Day Job Search, which sounds like a lot faster than what most people do, um, which helps young professionals get out of student loan debt while finding the ideal job, which is like, what the heck more could you want? With more than a million views on YouTube, her witty approach to tough talk sets her apart from the others. Annie's candid style cuts through the noise, delivering foolproof advice for real world challenges, far from generic tips. Her tips focus on practical steps to quickly improve finances, especially for challenges unique to millennials. Based in Boston with her husband, Annie compliments her professional life with a love for piano, adding another layer to her multifaceted persona. Annie, thanks for being with us today. Christine, thanks for having me on. I'm so excited to talk to you because when I was reading up on all the information and things that you talk about, this idea that we should be, you know, this idea of personal branding, like everybody understands branding their company, branding their, you know, their, their whatever, but like to think about yourself as a brand, like you yourself as a brand. I don't think that's something that most people, it's not really in their, in their orbit. It's not something that most people think about. Why do you think about it? What got you thinking in that in that way I got thinking about it because I knew what I wanted to do for my career which is I wanted to help people with their finances in some way like I I either want to like teach them how to manage their money or save it but there's no such thing as a job doing this like what job (laughs) title is there maybe people would think financial advisor but a financial advisor actually is someone who sells you stocks or says hey let me manage your retirement portfolio for you and I'll just take one percent fee every year out of that for myself, um, they're not actually teaching you anything. They just manage the money for you straight up. Yeah. But but they're actually helping people who already have the money. What exactly. about people who don't have the money? So I had to think long and hard because Dave Ramsey already does that. He somehow turned it into a career. And I was like, well, if he can do it, maybe there must be a way for me to do it, right? Like I, I wanna be the voice for millennials. Dave Ramsey is much older and he speaks to older folks, right? Um, I want to be more relatable to people my age who say like, Dave Ramsey can't relate to us, you know, us millennials, we have it harder. And (laughs) so so I was like, okay, how do I do this? Right? How do I brand myself so that people get help from me? They want it from me specifically. And one of the first things I did was at 22 years old, I wrote this book, it was called 1001 ways to save money. And that made no sales whatsoever when I published it in 2017. (laughs) But um, when I moved to Boston, um, I needed a job. I was working at Domino's Pizza in Texas before that, but moved to Boston. I was like, you know, I want to get an accounting job. If, If I, you know, can help people in some way with their money, maybe I can help small business owners with their accounting because I can do my own personal finances really well. And for a business, it's just a bigger scale, isn't it? Um, so I, right under the education line on my resume, I wrote, um, author of 1001 ways to save money. So I don't have an accounting degree, but I wrote that and that's what got me the calls. (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) Yeah. It sounds like for you, you had this similar goal to, to that I had for my book, which is to write the book, right? The idea was I have this goal. I want to write this book. I should have had a goal to write a successful, right? I should have had the goal to write a million dollar or million selling book, not just to write the book. But now whatever number book the five day job search was, then you you figured out, oh, okay, I need to make a goal to actually sell this book, right? <laughs> well, I didn't have the money for the first book to even sell it. You know, that yeah. requires more money for promotion. And at that time I was working on Domino's Pizza. So I did yeah. what I could. I, I, I made the cover myself. It was literally like a green book with 
I, I got a photo from shutterstock.com for like a hundred dollars. Then I got another photo and I put like that photo of like money getting flushed down, falling money, and I just placed it on top of the first photo of a toilet. <laughs> and said, That's the cover of my book. It was really tacky. <laughs> so I was on a really low budget for that one. This one, uh, the new one, the five day job search. I put a lot of money into this one because I have more money now, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, I, I better do it right this time. I got to do it the way a big publishing house would do it if they want their authors to succeed. So I've poured about 20K into this one. Yeah. But it, that's, it, you know, it's it, it's a silly adage, but it is unfortunately very true. You have to spend money to make money. I mean, you don't have to spend money to make money, but it's a lot easier, I think, to make money when you already have some. I have found that to be more true as I've yeah. made more money. Yeah. That's right. So how, <clears throat> how does it help a regular person who doesn't want to become like a coach or somebody who's going to be self-employed or even someone who does want to be self-employed? How does it help them to be branded? Yeah, you have to think, look, even if you work um, a full-time W-2 job, the way I always saw this, like I always saw this from the beginning, even if I'm working a full-time W-2 job, I think of the employer as a client. Like they're no different from any client where if you're like a freelancer or self-employed, just the difference is that this employer of yours is paying you for 40 hours of your time versus a freelance client might pay you for just five hours of your time. And you'll have like maybe 10 of those five hour clients instead of one 40 hour client, if that makes right. sense. So yeah. there's no difference in my head. So that's why you keep saying regular person, but I'm just like, but <laughs> in the end, you know, you are the CEO of your own company. You are your company, right? You are the CEO. And in terms of your personal finances, you're the CFO of your own personal finances as well. Like if you think of it like that, then I think that will really set you up for success. Well, absolutely. And that's why I wanted to bring it up because I don't think that most people think of themselves that way. Right. I work for this. I'm working for the men. I'm just like, they just, I just do what they say, but you're right. Especially when you're looking for a job rather than, I mean, I, I this is bringing me back to some of the stuff in Think and Crow Rich, where he has you create this beautiful resume and before the internet, right. Before then that's all you had. You're giving this person something that's showing them that you are a step above everybody else that you're cut above the, the rest of the crowd that of the 200 people who are applying for a job with this company, you've got something special because you're already seen as an industry leader or, or you're already, right. You're already a thought leader or something in that particular industry. So they would be lucky to have you as opposed to, you know, here I am, here's my resume and I'm really great. And you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> Well, I feel like it's the difference between having to sell yourself, right? Like if, if I, like I'm a real estate broker, that's one of my hats. So if someone comes to me as a referral, they already trust me. They already know me. They already feel like good. They already feel good about working with me as opposed to say, if I got my, a lead from, you know, realtor.com, which sometimes happens, this is a complete stranger off the street. They have no idea who I am. So I'm like, you know, what am I going to say to them? I'm really good. I'm really honest. I'm a great negotiator, right? Like, so I'm in this part where I have to sell myself. Like, I'm so awesome. You're going to love me. You know, I'm, I, as you can tell, I'm not good at that. <laughs> 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 but if they Google me and then they find all these blog posts where I'm talking about, you know, topics that are relevant to them and that they, they start to already think, huh, you know, this person might know what they're talking about before they ever even talk to me before they ever meet me. It's almost like a referral. And I'm thinking that that's the same way it could work if an employer, right. The employers are Googling everybody and, you know, looking everybody up on LinkedIn and every place else. So if they start to see like, wow, look at this person, they actually wrote an article about finance. Huh, this person actually wrote a book about finance. Wow. So clearly we have to have her and they're, they're already sold before, you know, you're not sitting there with like, look at my resume. I'm so good. Right. It's just, I mean, I don't know. Am I, I am it. I interpreting I correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> and then like, for example, let's say you, you're, you make um, TikTok videos or YouTube videos as well. I mean, that is just another layer. I'm not here promoting this book to ask people to become the next influencer in your field. I'm just, I think I'm being reasonable when I'm asking people, hey, you're an expert. You've been doing this job for 10 years. It's about time you make things prettier as a package of yourself, 
right? Yeah. I, I think of yourself like, I think everyone has their own gift. You are a gift to the world. You have gifts, you have talents. Gifts are meant to be given away to others, right? Well, that's on the inside, you're the gift, but can we make you like a prettier gift? Can we put some gift wrap put and, a bow on you. Glitter and bow on it, you know, <laughs> to make it so like people are like so excited to open up this package. Oh my God, I've discovered this amazing Annie, you know, or something like that. <laughs> exactly. That's really exactly. what we're doing here. I'm not teaching people to be more more of an expert. I think people already are experts, but they're just too afraid to step into that. So the, the thing with videos, I think it's great. That, that's why it's my favorite um, way of communicating is because yeah. you also show more of that personality. <laughs> you know, you go into an interview. What's the point of an interview? It's they're trying to see, they're not trying to see if you're qualified. They've already determined that you're qualified based on the resume, based on the LinkedIn profile. By the time you get in the interview, it's just to see what's your personality like. Are you, is your personality going to clash with someone else who's been here for 10 years already? Yeah. Do you work well with other people? But if they saw videos of you online, they already have a good good um, guess at what your personality is like if, yeah. if you're the same on camera as you are off camera. Yeah, exactly. And you, the other side of that is if they look for you and on TikTok, all they're finding is like, hey, my boyfriend sucks. But right. I mean, you you have a package out there already. Is it a good package? Is it a package we want to hire or not? Oh my gosh. Last month, I was <laughs> last month, I came across this YouTube short of this this Gen Zer, maybe you saw it because it went totally viral. It's got millions of views. This Gen Zer um, was driving in her car and she's like, I just graduated from college last year. I have $80,000 in student loan debt. I got a degree in marketing, guys, but I can't even get um, a, a marketing job. I thought I'd come out of college making $100,000 in marketing. And here they're paying me only 40K for entry level. And you know what, guys? I make more money as a sushi restaurant waiter. Waiters. And then I'm just <laughs> like, oh my God, no one's ever going to hire after this. Right? <laughs> Exactly. She's complaining like, she I, can't get hired, but I swear after she made that video, no employer is going to want to hire her. Exactly. <laughs> and that's that's what we aren't thinking about, right? When we're out there just like spewing our opinions all over the place, you know, it just the the off, the ups or the, the reverse side of personal branding, right? This is my personal brand. I'm sitting there in too tight clothes, you know, talking about how dissing somebody that, you know, cut me off in the traffic and like... Okay. They're going to look at this and say, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Add her to the roster, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, if, if, if all that happens is that less people are making like trashy videos, then I think it's your, your campaign has been, you know, successful in my opinion, <laughs> even if nobody gets a job, even if we just have less, you know, rant videos, <laughs> but so, how, okay. So enough of that. How do you suggest that people get started if they, right. do, if, if yeah. like up till now, all they had was those videos of them, you know, complaining about something that's going on in the news. All right. Well, because we went this way, actually, normally I start recommending getting a new headshot, but because of the direction we went, <laughs> I think if you have those trashy videos, the first thing is you need to do an audit of everything you posted <laughs> online. Uh, so when I was building my brand, what I actually did was I um, searched on Google and Bing for the username handle that I kept using. It's Annie Love Pie. So I had to search. This is something I made up when I was like 14 years old, Annie Love Pie. <laughs> um, to, to see like what what accounts did I open across the internet? Like, did I have any forums? Did I answer something on Yahoo Answers that I really should take down today? <laughs> you know? um, so, so do that, you know, search your full name, um, search your username handles, and then like delete accounts that you no longer want on the internet. It'll take a few months for them to actually come off those search results. Um, you know, go through your social media profiles as well, and then just not even make private, but just straight up delete the posts that just no longer reflect you because we're creating new for you here, right? And then only after you do this, then we can work on actually creating. <laughs> But what we, what you were going to say, what you, the advice you would have given if we didn't go down this road of getting a headshot is a fantastic advice because that's another thing, you know, people, it's just, you know, someone with their dog or like they're in a bathing suit or they're, you know, just doing something they're at a party with a big beer in their hand or something, right? That's not when people look at you, even I look at the, the kind of things when, when people are on zoom and they shut their camera off, like what, what, what comes up? 
Is it just, you know, and, and because that could happen, right? When I shut my camera off, you get to see me ah. selling my book, right? <laughs> yeah. And then mine is my headshot. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. See, it looks fantastic. So, but a lot of people, there's nothing, right? When they shut it off, there's just like a picture of a, you know, dark camera thing or, and it matters. It's it that, matters, it's a right? Small when, detail. When you take, pay attention to those small details, that extra subtle polish, people don't, they cannot pinpoint what is it about you that's so amazing. But I, I'm an accountant, so I pay attention those to those tiny little details and I make sure it has that extra polish. Um, it all comes together for that extra oomph, that lasting, memorable, great first impression. And they, they don't know what it is you're doing, but they just know they like it. Yeah, exactly. They trust you. It's a trust factor when you seem professional and especially with you with money, right? If people are going to take money advice from you, if you just kind of showed up as some kind of a, I don't even know what, you know, that, then why well, would be like, yeah, okay. You know, she looks a little crazy. I mean, maybe they would, you know, there are some people who are a little bit out there who people listen to for money, but I think it's that you're, you're have to overcome yourself, right? Because when no, we were talking about the Zoom yeah, thing, that, that, that perception, it matters, I swear, because yeah. I was in an, an, a, my second job search in an interview. I asked them, why are you hiring for this job? What happened to the old person? Like, because I'm trying to like snuff out, is this a toxic company? Like, yeah. you know, if they fired for some reason that I, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to work here. Right. Yeah. And then they, they told me, look, to be honest, she took like three hour lunch breaks. She would leave for lunch. She'd come back three hours later and we'd be like, where were you? And then she'd go like, but I have an illness. Therefore I can take three hour lunch breaks. Um, and then her, they were complaining that her desk was always a mess and like papers everywhere, you know, couldn't find anything. And they were scared to just put something on her desk because maybe it would get lost on her desk. <laughs> like that's how bad it was. Yeah. Um, and so that was their perception of her. And I was like, oh, well, they thought like because she's disorganized in general she must not be good at her job in accounting because that's right. something that's important for accounting right exactly well and you bring up a great point as well because you're not always looking for a job but where you are you might want to get promoted you might want to keep your job and having that beautiful public persona your pub your your personal branding out there is when they're looking to you know okay this person's going to leave we'd like to re um promote from within. How are we going to do that? Wow. Look at this. You know, I keep getting these great newsletters from so-and-so in accounting or Annie in accounting is just, she's killing it. You know, did you see that you, that uh, LinkedIn article she did the other day, man, we got to promote her. Right. I mean, even if not from within the company, even people outside of the company, they yeah. see you, they want to jump on you. I swear. Like yeah. I, I get, I still get messages today from recruiters. We're in a down economic downturn right now. I still get messages from recruiters, potential employers. They're like, we want to hire you. And then I'm just like, yeah, I'm not interested. But yeah, it's like the opportunities still come regardless. Right. And then you can be fussy, right? If, if only one person ever asks you out on a date, you're going to end up marrying that person. But if you like, <laughs> if, you, if you like get, uh, have a good, a good uh, whatever. But that's the point that that's the whole point of the five day job search. So in the book, I tell people, if you want to have a successful job search, there's also a second reason why you have to apply to 50 jobs a day. So I found out. Um, so the statistic is that the average job search takes six months. And I was like, what? Why? Wow. Why? Why is the person taking six months to land a job? Uh, <laughs> like articles on the Internet are saying, like, this is normal set your expectations low. And I'm just like, oh, oh, okay. Um, but uh, like, and then I, I started coaching people on their job search. I found out people are applying literally to only one job to five jobs a day. And then I was like, of course, you're not <laughs> gonna get very far, one to five a day. I mean, yeah, that's like me applying to 350 in a week versus you applying to 350 in six months, right? So you can apply to the same amount, but you just spread it out over six months. And yeah. the benefit of shortening that 350 to just a week instead of six months is I, I would get multiple phone calls, emails asking me for an interview. I would do those interviews and then I can line up multiple job offers in a, such a short period of time. And I have like whatever is in my hand. I'm like, OK, which one's giving me the best offer? Which one's giving me what I want? And then I get to pick and choose. You know, my friend, she read my book and um, 
she followed the advice. She had a 10 day job search. So on the 10th day, she lined up five interviews all to, to be done on the same day. And she got multiple offers. She got to pick and choose. I mean, that's the best thing, right? When you, that's what you're saying about like getting only one date <laughs> versus five <laughs> dates, you know, yeah. you pick yeah, the best absolutely. one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Who's got the, who's bringing the most to the table. And then you can also go back and say, you know, I really like your corporate atmosphere, but I, I got this other offer and they're paying 50 grand more. What do you think? You know, and you, you're in a much better position to set your own as opposed to being, you know, set your own rules and set your own you know, criteria for the job, as opposed to if you've just got one offer in the last six months. <laughs> Like, oh my God, I got to take this job. Yes, of course I'll work weekends and holidays and, you know, whatever, <laughs> and take a 20K pay cut and not a problem. It's okay, right? Because you're desperate, you're starving to death. Yeah. So let's say you're an entrepreneur. Well, okay, so this is, if you already have a job and you already have a field, but I think for entrepreneurs, it might be difficult for them to identify um, what they should be focusing on in their personal branding exercise. So let me think of a, of a career that's, I mean, it's easy if you're in something like, well, I mean, every, no matter what you do, right. You could write an article about it. You could help people to understand it. I actually was reading a thing about a pool company and that they have opportunities from all over the country because they have these amazing blog posts about all the things that could possibly go wrong with your pool, which like, I would think that's a very limited, you know, that's three blogs, right? <laughs> but but apparently not. And so they, they've they got all these different blog posts with all this stuff and they're considered the experts in the pool industry. And I, you can do that anywhere, right? But how does a person get started with understanding what content is germane and what they should really be focusing on and, you know, how to connect with people, how to get people to, to because when you're an entrepreneur, it's not, people aren't necessarily going to Google your name, right? They're, they're Googling your, your industry. So how can you help to find, get, get some of those people to find you? Yeah. Um, the first thing I think is to do your research. Like for example, I'm branding myself as a best-selling award-winning author, right? That's me rebranding myself. I was, a, I'm a full-time accountant. So I'm doing the switch on my career, right? Yeah. It's a, almost like a transition I'm in the midst of. Uh, so what I had to do was I had to look up all the names of the big people in this industry, like let's say uh, Robin Sharma, Marie Forleo, you know, Adam Grant. Uh, I found them on on Amazon bestsellers list, right? And then what I would do is I, I took this list, sorted it from A to Z, and then I would just literally spend an hour a day researching each one to, to look at all of their social media profiles. What kind of content are they posting, right? And then I would write down that. And then like, let's say you researched 10 of them, then by the time you're done with your research, you have a compilation of like from 10 different ones, all of the different kinds of content you can create in your own style, right? I'm pretty sure everything out there has been done before. I mean, like, come on, yeah. everything out there is already there. But the question is, it has to be done in your style. You are unique, right? So you do it in your own style. So like, let's say I'm, there's already like existing career coaches on TikTok, right? I'm getting on TikTok in 2024. So that's why this is on my mind right now. I'm like, <laughs> well, how, how do I come up with the right content to make for TikTok? What I, what I would do to go about doing this to set the right, right plan is I'm going to make a list of like maybe the top 20 TikTok influencers that are career coaches. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to sit down every day and I'm going to watch their videos one by one. And I'm going to write down what they posted like and make a general category of what trend that would fit into and then after 20 i think i would have a whole list to work with yeah. and then i would just put my own spin on it like let's say there's already so many videos about um uh, like comedic comedic skits about someone getting fired right yeah. <laughs> then then i make up my own skit i don't copy their exact lines or you know right. the, their costumes but i come up with my own costumes my own characters, my own lines for these skits, yeah. right? So it's it's already been done, but you put your own spin on it. That's what I recommend. Absolutely. And then are you just hoping those things go viral or you're also seeing what kinds of things they use for hashtags and for other ways to engage followers and stuff? Oh yeah, it's important to, to take a look at the hashtags as well. I'm still learning how to use TikTok. It's fairly new to me. Um, so what I did was I bought a course 
on how to do TikTok as an influencer and how to grow. But that's how I do anything. Like my YouTube channel has a million views and 18,000 subscribers. I didn't just like randomly put up videos. You know, I actually took courses. I watched videos from other successful YouTubers who were teaching other people how to do YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. I watched all of their videos. I sat down every day. I took notes on what they were doing. Um, I watched like several of them. And then I noticed the things that were re being recommended by across all of them over and over again. And I was like, okay, if it's being repeated so many times, like this specific piece of advice uh, to look up a keyword or something, then I know it's really important versus what one person said only one time, that's not as um, influential, right? So that's what I would do. I would always watch something, watch a course first to make sure I actually do something that's strategic. But what you also are doing, Annie, is that you're focusing, right? A lot of entrepreneurs, when they get started, they're like, okay, I got to learn LinkedIn and YouTube and, you know, Instagram, and I've got to start putting stuff on Pinterest. And then I find it, right? So they're just like trying to, they're completely overwhelming themselves with social media and they're just throwing stuff all over the place. But you, you're like, okay, I'm going to really rock YouTube. And you sat down and you learned how to do YouTube. You figured out what was important. And now you're like, okay, new year, new goal. I'm going to now do the same thing with TikTok. I've already got videos. I can repurpose stuff. There's lots of synergies there, you know, right? And then start with that. I I just want to say that that's an excellent way to do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's the way to go. But honestly, um, right now, among all the platforms, TikTok is growing the fastest. Yeah. P people are getting clients off of TikTok. I couldn't believe that, you know? Um, I thought it was just like a, a place for a Gen Z to lip sync to music or something like that or or dance. Um, yeah. But actually, uh, so I, I was taking an acting class, Boston acting, in uh, three months ago. It's a group acting class. And this group was filled with so many attractive people all in one place. I couldn't believe my eyes. I've never seen so many attractive people in one place because it's filled with like 18 to 22 year olds that they know they're gorgeous, by the way. They know, <laughs> they've probably been told their whole life that they're so gorgeous. So they probably think that they have what it takes to make it into Hollywood, which is why they're in that class, right? right. Um, and then um, one of the girls, um, she, she said when she introduced herself, she's like, oh yeah, I'm also taking private acting classes. So I followed up with her. I was like, well, how did you find a private teacher? Because I've been Googling all over for Boston uh, private acting teacher. I, I didn't want to take group classes. I wanted private, but I yeah. couldn't find anything on a Google search. I, I literally couldn't. So that's why I did the group class as a last resort. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, I found them on TikTok. I found her on TikTok. I was like, what? Yep. She's like, yep. yeah, yeah. I found someone I liked on TikTok and I reached out to her. And then last week I was on a call with um, someone who sells like whole life insurance. I didn't meet her on TikTok. I, I found her through some like networking group that had like a 12 person meeting and then I just wanted to follow up with her. So I booked a call, but she yeah. didn't remember me. So um, when I got on, she was like, well, how did you find out about me? I'm like, I, we literally just spoke like two days ago in a group. Um, and then she goes, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I've been getting so many people from TikTok. She, she's like 60, I swear, she's 60 years old and she's on TikTok. She has like 35,000 followers. She's talking about money and people are, booking calls with her through TikTok. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't believe. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's fantastic too. I mean, when I when it first came out, it seemed like the the things had to be so short that I thought, how can you ever really get into anything with it? But now I guess you can stitch stuff together, whatever. I don't know. But I know mine are longer than whatever it was originally like what was well, it now, 40 now seconds? Now you can do 10 minutes up to 10 yeah, minutes. Exactly. Yeah. But it's it's yeah that what's the next big thing, right? What's the next big thing? Where should I be now? It's absolutely. Yeah. And I strike it while it was hot. Exactly. Before some other thing comes along. <laughs> but TikTok is fun. I think it'll be around for a little while. Because it the way they push new stuff to you, right? Like you're just sitting there, I, you get addicted. You're just like, oh, here, and here's something else that I like. Here's something else that I like. Um, I actually hardly am ever on social media, but I, I understand that's how it works. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So back to focus. So we're entrepreneurs and we're like, okay, how am I going to market myself? What am I, what do I want to say? 
So we're now we're going out to people who are a similar, like who we consider to be our competitors. Is that would be a suggestion? Yeah. That's yeah. what I recommend you do. That's yeah. the, the way to create your game plan. Don't copy, but do better. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then what? I mean, okay. So now we have our, hopefully our social media is kind of in pretty good shape and we're starting to, are we just going to like, people are going to just kind of drop in from there or do we still, do people still need a website? Do you think? I think people still need a website. There has, there still has to be a way to funnel people in to contact you. You cannot keep them on the, these platforms because I grew on YouTube, but now with YouTube's new algorithm, even if you're just borderline controversial in what you're saying, they will shadow ban you. Like this is literally in YouTube's guidelines. Like that was their goal, I think last year. They explicitly stated like, we, we want to aim for just 0.5% video views of the whole website for borderline controversial stuff. That's why you go on your homepage these days and you see things like, I blew up a mountain or like, I tried out this weird prank. It's like these boring old, you know, <laughs> gags over and over again that are family friendly rather yeah. than um, from people you want to actually hear different views from, right? Uh, so I, I still recommend you still need a website, get people somehow on your mailing list, offer something for free to encourage them to get on your on your list, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then what are you sending them once they're on their mailing list? What kind of stuff are you, are you giving them? You could probably like, here's an example of something I thought was great. Um, so I was shopping around for a payment processing solution, something, a, a way, a cheap way for a business to business company to collect money from their clients because still so old school, they collect checks you know, mail checks instead of like letting people pay online because the fees are really high. Like, let's say the bill is a thousand because it's business to business. Yeah. You, you would expect to pay like $30, $30 in fees. That's average. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I found this company that was charging only 50 cents a transaction, regardless of the amount. Like, let's say the bill was 10,000. You still only pay 50 cents for the transaction. Wow. Um, so I found them. And one of the things I thought they did really great was on their homepage, they offered a free ebook that said top 10 questions you should ask a payment processor before you decide to sign a contract with them. And I read the whole book and it really educated me on how this industry worked. And I actually ended up going with them when I was shopping because it really opened my eyes. They educated me. And then I was like, well, they must really know what they're doing. Right. And they are freely giving away this information as well. They yeah. have good service, basically. What company was that, if you don't mind my ask? Yeah, yeah, it's called um, Express Pay. I, I can give you a link to it afterward. I actually Thanks. said, because I work in real estate, that's why I set it up. And I think it would be <laughs> beneficial for, for your brokerage. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what other things should we know? So people who are like, oh my God, I never thought of myself as a brand. I, you know, I guess I've got some information here, but what else should we be thinking about? What other kinds of considerations? Some other things you should think about is your bio. I think a lot of people don't give too much thought into getting a professional bio written, but that is so important because people want to read about you before they reach out. And the bio is more for like, it's like, even if you're fresh out of college, I think everyone can do this. The reason why I say this is because the bio is for what you want. It's for the direction of the career you're going for, right? Um, what do you want to do 10 years from now? What are your dreams for 20 years from now? You want people to be able to reach out and collaborate with you, partner with you. Or um, if there is a company that has their eyes on you and they see, oh my gosh, what she wants to do is right in line with us. And they know you're a rock star at what you do then they're going to come in at an angle that's going to be trying to convince you to be with them, right? right? So that's why it's so important about what you want, but also to back it up with your past achievements if you have any. And I'm sure everyone has them. It's more about wording it. Um, I had to pay a copywriter $300 before ChatGPT came out to write those stuff for me. Um, but now that we have ChatGPT, you can upgrade to ChatGPT4 for the $20 a month subscription and have it write it for you instead. Does it do a good enough job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty much it pretty much comes out the way I want it to. Um, it needs some tweaking, some polishing, but that's with anything, right? Yeah. And if it has 
if it's written in a tone or a style that you're like, eh, it's still off. It doesn't have like a tone or style that I like. What you can do is just like going back to your competitors, right? So go back to your competitors or um, individuals in your space that uh, are at the top of their field, look at their bios and then find the ones that you like that have that tone and style, copy and paste that bio into ChatGPT and say, analyze the tone and style of this bio write my bio in the same tone and style. It will copy that style. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. It says, I don't know. I like to do those for my blogs just to start with that. And then I, you know, add my own like personal knowledge or whatever, but, um, but then do you have to give, do you have to, uh, what is your feeling about giving, um, What's the word when you give credit to ChatGPT and say, "Oh, here's my great bio written by ChatGPT." <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the standard should be. It's so new. I haven't given credit, right? Because anyway, what I've really been using it for is to help people write their resumes. Yeah. Write their resumes and their LinkedIn profile. So I, I'm really using it for other people. Um, I'm also using it to do pitches. So like even pitching you for this to get on the show. That message was written by ChatGPT. So it's not like I created a product that I can sell that yeah. was written by ChatGPT. So I'm not so sure about that just yet. Yeah. When I do my blog post with, you know, when I, I'll take an article that's interesting and then I'll run it through a couple of different, like Bard and ChatGPT and, you know, go back and forth with that till I get it to where I want. And then I'll add my own stuff. But I always say, you know, Bard and I wrote this article together or mm -hmm. ChatGPT and I wrote this article together because it's just, I don't know. It feels like I should give credit to my co-author. <laughs> Perhaps not necessary. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the ethics surrounding it are still being flushed out. Yeah, well, that's why I that's why that came up is because I had you know listened to some like different speakers and stuff like that talking about ChatGPT and giving some kind of citation. But also I've linked to the article that I originally got the inspiration from, which I think is probably good for me, right? To, as far as my- Yeah, yeah. Backlinking is good. Yeah, well. backlinking to the, arc, to the article that I shamelessly copied. <laughs> um, Annie, I love talking to you. I think you're really cool and we're close to each other. So I think we should definitely like have lunch or something like that. I think so too. You're the first one that's in Boston. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I was like, oh my God, look, she's in Chelsea. Oh my God. So um, if people want, okay, so everybody, first of all, let's just spell this out. Everybody needs to talk to you clearly because no matter who, unless you're already like an influencer, unless you're already like so cool and, and your public persona is already so clear and your branding is so on point with what you actually want out of the life, then people absolutely have to talk to you. So how can they do that? What's the best way for people to get in touch with you? The best way for people to get in touch with me is by visiting www.annieyangfinancial.com. That's A-N-N-I-E-Y-A-N-G financial.com. And a lot of this stuff, pretty much all of this stuff that we talked about today is in my book, The Five Day Job Search. It's for people who are job seekers, but it's also for entrepreneurs because what we're really doing is positioning yourself as the expert in your industry. So you can get the free five day job search audiobook on annieyangfinancial.com. If you actually like just go, go on the page, click at the top where it says audiobook, put in your name, email address, you can get it for free. Cool. That's really generous. And we very much appreciate it because you're right. Entrepreneurs are always looking for work. Right? <laughs> That's our job is to look for jobs, like get people to find us and love us and give us money. So it's, yeah, it's definitely, we're, we're on the 24 or seven job search. Excellent. Thank you so much, Annie, for being with us. And we're going to put all the links to Annie's generous gifts on the, uh, in the show notes. And thank you listener for listening. Think of right now, just sit down and write down the names of five people who you know who need this, either because they need another job or because they're entrepreneurs or because they need to be more cool or they need to get promoted or they have no clue how much they need personal branding and how much it can do for their lives. And for this episode to them, we will all thank you and they will thank you for sure. And in the meantime, have a wonderful week. <laughs> 